Hello, my name is Jack Davey and I'm the newly appointed Exhibitions Curator here at Morley College. Today I'm really excited to present to you our first online only digital exhibition, a work in progress show for our Zussi Robar scholars entitled Figuratively Speaking. This show is a collaborative work between the Morley Exhibitions team and the School of Visual and Digital Arts and particular thanks are due to Steve Wright, who will introduce the show in more detail in a minute, and to Laura Stacoli. We're very excited to launch what we hope will be the first of many shows showcasing the out artistic output of Morley College staff and students, and we are particularly delighted to be doing so in association with the Zussi Robar Scholars. I'm Steve Wright, I'm the Zussi Robar Scholarship Coordinator and Personal Tutor here at Morley College London. It's a role I've very much enjoyed performing for the last five years since the scholarship began. This year it's a role I've been sharing with my colleague Gunter Herbst and huge thanks to him and as always we've had the unfailing and very generous and heartfelt support of Sarah Robertson Jonas who is Morley's Head of School for Visual and Digital Arts backed up by a wonderful team including our programme managers and administrators and again special thanks to Ruth Aban who does most of the administration for the scholarship. The Greatest thanks must go to the very generous support of the Zhuzhi Robos and Alfred Teddy Smith Art Trust. It's they who have funded the scholarship these last five years, enabling each year two artists to come for a year's study here at Morley College London, to learn new skills, to develop those they already have, and to do so with tutorial support from myself, Gunter and others, to really push and challenge the artwork that they make. Gigi Robos herself was a Hungarian emigre who became a very successful portrait and figurative painter here in London and was a very popular and lively character on the London art scene. Many decades later, the idea of figurative art has changed enormously and figuratively speaking, the exhibition we're presenting today treats the human figure in a much more sort of sideways, thoughtful way, as you'll find out when we introduce the artworks in the exhibition from this year's scholars, Jenny Bell and Helen Johannesson. And of course, it's Jenny and Helen's enormous commitment and hard work that we're here to celebrate today. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this preview for Figuratively Speaking our Gigi Robosh Scholarship Exhibition taking place online for the first time for 2020 and featuring the artwork of Helen Johannesson and Jenny Bell, our current scholars. Jenny and Helen have had a unique experience as Gigi Robosh Scholars. They began in September 2019 studying a range of courses chosen by themselves here at Morley College London with tutorial support from myself and other artists. And then in March this year, along with the rest of us, they had to go into lockdown. Aside from a bit of remote support that we were able to give them, they've very much been thrown back on their own resources. And it's been decided by the Gigi Robosh and Alfred Teddy Smith Art Trust and ourselves here at Morley College to extend their scholarship into 2021 and so Jenny and Helen will be able to return to Morley to study further courses and to work towards the gallery exhibition here at the Morley Gallery taking place about halfway through 2021. We were expecting to be launching an actual gallery show now but instead rather than let everything go cold and leave the extraordinary work that Jenny and Helen have made unseen we're giving a kind of snapshot here of work in progress and some of their thoughts as well as the visual art that they've been making with Figuratively Speaking, an online exhibition. Helen and Jenny both have connections with Morley College London. Helen teaches HND ceramics and has a very successful long-standing career as an artist working in ceramic. Jenny is the course leader for the Textiles Foundation here at Morley. Jenny originally studied at Campbell in printmaking and 
is a printmaker very much in her own way, her favoured machine being the photocopier. Helen's been making work, not so much with ceramics, but with plaster and paint, both of them really throwing themselves open to new materials and showing a really wonderful willingness to go back to basics and to be beginners again, learning new skills. And that's very much something we look for in scholars. There's that high level thinking, a lot of experience, but they're very open to new things. And of course, they've had more challenges than previous scholars. And I think that's very much reflected in the show, not just the fact it's online, but in some of its content. Before the lockdown, Helen and Jenny were taking part in regular courses here at Morley College. Jenny, going back to the figurative roots that Gigi Robosch herself would have recognised, studying life drawing and painting with Gunter Herbst, but also work that relates to the body and study relating to human experience in a very different way, in therapeutic yoga and printed textiles, among other courses. Helen has done some photography courses here at Morley. Documentary photography helped her to look at the world around her in a different way, just as that world was becoming much smaller and more confined under the COVID-19 lockdown restrictions. Also studying abstract painting, learning to use paint is really quite a new material for her. And of course, I know was a huge influence on Helen that she very much enjoyed was a short course Rhythm Through Colour with Sarah Campbell. Rather than present you with an exhibition of finished work or an exhibition themed around these courses, Helen and Jenny have chosen, I think, a far more meaningful and reflective approach, and they've chosen words around which to group their artworks in various media, whether it's plaster and paint, or photography, or print. Words such as confused or absorbed. This is an exhibition that doesn't present you with finished products or easy answers. It's much more kind of invitation to make sense of the artwork, to think about it, and to find connections between the different works, including connections between these two artists. It's been really wonderful this year that Helen and Jenny have kept in such close touch with each other and have really supported each other, and there's been a lot of cross-fertilization of ideas. They've both written an artist statement, which will help you to get some of the background on the thinking and the learning that's been taking place this year. And I would suggest that seeing this exhibition online, you do a bit of flipping between the pages for Helen and for Jenny, but I think you'll find a lot of very interesting things in common that might not be obvious, and that some of them are conceptual, some of them are visual. It's quite a lot about pattern, about things that are fragmented, broken into tiny pieces, perhaps reassembled. The exhibition is going to be available for all to see through the new Morley Gallery website, which is www.morleygallery.com. And I'm going to hand you over now to the artists themselves who are going to present a highlights tour of Figuratively Speaking. Hello everyone, um, my name is Jenny. Thank you very much for um, viewing our online show. Um, so this is my kind of explanation. Um, I've got a few slides here to talk through. Um, so my first slide is an image um, that was shot on location in Oslo in Norway. Um, so it is a study of cloth in water. So this is at the beginning of um, my online um, exhibition. So basically either as a kind of way of researching or sort of understanding what it is that I'm doing, I tend to either go swimming or lay in some water or oddly just take some cloth and see what happens when I sort of let it sit in the element of the water. So um, I do this a lot, so this was a quite, it was quite difficult to select which image seemed appropriate for this show. 
um, but the cloth here, I think it has a shiny surface, which I find interesting, so that's why I selected it. Um, so my work tends to explore the surface and both on top and underneath, so water is important. Um, uh, you will also see in my online exhibition some uh, life drawing and some shadows of um, my body on a yoga mat. So um, here this is a sort of experiential research I guess, sort of, it's not just a gathering of drawing. So I went to the life drawing class and the therapeutic yoga to gain a kind of deeper connection to myself and my practice. Um, most of my life drawings were drawn not looking at the paper, um, so really trying to connect my hand and the tool and the paper together with the experience of seeing the body. Um, this, uh, I guess, was I would go to yoga and then go to life drawing, so this is sort of this um, research is simultaneous in some senses. Um, so there is a series of work um, presented here called that is titled Mystified. Um, a lot of the work that I create is about trying to locate a space um, for my body or uh, the sort of feeling of um, being a body, whether that is um, internal or external. So this Mystified series are um, so I've got some very exciting cloth from a colleague and a creative mind, uh, Debbie Brown from Morley College on one of her evening classes. Very, um, just jewels on it, transparent. And I was just dragging that across the photocopier. And uh, these are the results. So you can see my hand or my fingers in quite a lot of these images. Um, but the sense of control is what I'm looking for between my, myself and the machine. So I'm sort of stopping the um, photocopy in time and sort of wondering what's going to pop out the other end. So this, these are a series of kind of photocopies and in sort of I'm zooming in using Photoshop to find more interesting spaces. Um, my uh, fifth slide here is a large piece of cloth. So one of the images from the Mystified series was printed um, digitally onto um, silk. Uh, it's quite big, it's 136 centimetres by 200. And I'm sort of looking at sort of, uh, well, both the cloth, um, so I tend to you take cloth, run it across the photocopier, and then um, make it into paper, then take the paper and make that back into cloth again. So this is an example of, I guess, the 2D becoming three-dimensional and the flexibility that cloth and fabric provides. Uh, so my final slide uh, shows some pieces from the Drifting series. So it's some silk that I um, have dyed using the Shibore clamp. Um, process. I did that with Caroline Bartlett in the print. Um, sorry, in the textile studio. Um, so, at the beginning of this project, I was interested. I'm really quite interested in grids and systems, and so I was trying to create a system here um, using dye and cloth, which is quite impossible. But then, sort of taking that again, dragging it across the photocopier, and seeing what happens and I start to create these kind of holes and vortexes and um, one of these slides is a video um, where I'm kind of zooming into the hole or closing the hole. So I'm, I'm trying to sort of play with, um, I guess, time again and sort of transitioning from the internal to the external um, through something that is essentially light based. Um, so uh, yeah. This is um, the green and, well, it, yeah, green, yellow, black, white um, colour comes from dye, but then the, the moiré effect comes from the light in the photocopier. So that is uh, a sort of insight into the work that I've created so far. Uh, thank you very much for coming to visit.
My name is Helen Johannesson and I will be speaking about some of the work that I have selected um, to talk about from, figuratively speaking, the Work in Progress show at Morley Gallery as part of the Juji Roboj Scholarship. Um, I have spent the past year exploring different disciplines and I think the main thing to say about what I've done is that a lot of individual projects have come together and this digital uh, format has enabled me to do that. So the very, very first slide, Confused Perspective from Clear Vista, is a amalgamation of a photography project and a paper making sketching project that I did. And what I've done is use filters um, that occur naturally in life for my photography. So in this case, a window that's steamed up with rain, distortion, blurring the landscape, and the sketch is um, about perspective and the linear aspect of drawing you in. And I suppose it's important to say here is um, how I see myself as the figure in my artwork. So it's very much about being part of the, the view and the abstract scene, or however you see this, this imagery um, interacting together. And that leads me on to the second slide, which is um, a, a, a video study of materials. Um, and in this case, we've got clear perspex um, on a jewellery course that I took. And I found myself drawn to the, the components and the, the size I was able to work at is, um, doesn't necessarily come across on the video, but what's important to me is, is the, the sense of the scale which can be achieved through uh, the experiment with the light and the colour shifting around. So this was actually quite small, but I see myself within this landscape and imagining what it might feel like to be immersed in this shifting colour or, or moving amounts of light, which is again very, uh, a sort of thing that we have experiences of every day, whether we notice it or not, it's, um, it, it's part of the, the cycle. And then moving on to the third slide, there are four pieces of work. The first two are um, individually created at different times on different projects. And the first one is a painting actually from uh, my imagination or memory. And this was very unconscious uh, process that I went through. And the second image there is a photograph that I took when I was doing project shooting into light. So my actual screen was blank and I couldn't see what I was taking until I, I looked back at, at the images. So I, on the third um, image there on that slide, you can see perhaps how the two have merged together and, and, and they're working in harmony with the light and the intensity of that light. And I believe that the figure here is, is only understandable because of the shadow, and shadows are only created through, through light and darkness. Um, the fourth image is actually a study of my photograph, an um, oil painting study. So I went straight in to the refracted light area and from that has emerged a figure, a much clearer yet still abstract figure from all these um, individual activities. Then moving on to the, the fourth slide, there's a more three-dimensional piece of work. Um, and these, this is using plaster and paint and texture and a bit like the photography process where I'm using layers and building up and taking away and merging. And I've used the video to express that process of me making, which again is a very, um, uh, very visceral and tactile aspect to me as an artist. So it's about my involvement 
figurative involvement in, in the making and trying to express some of that uh, in the final pieces. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight into what I was doing and thinking and explains a little bit more about what you're looking at. Thank you Helen and Jenny and thank you all very much for joining us here today for the preview of Figuratively Speaking, this interim exhibition for the Zhuzhi Robosh Scholarship and we hope very much to see you in person next summer for Helen and Jenny's final exhibition at the Morley Gallery. Thank you. Thank you.